My name is Trina Quant and I am a sculptor, um, but I don't really like to put a box around what I do because I um, work in a lot of different materials and I really love a lot of different processes that find their way into my work. I've been to other Third Thursdays, but this is my first stint as an artist. I'm actually getting my uh, master's degree right now in art education. Um, and before that I had owned a small handbag business, um, so that kind of took my fine art time. Um, but once I decided to go back into school, I really delved back into my, my personal studio space. I am originally from this area, uh, so nature finds its way into my work in a lot of different ways, um, kind of unexpected ways, I think. I grew up in Glens Falls and I live in Saratoga now. Um, actually on my way down to New York uh, to work in New York for a while, which should be a lot of fun. No better place than New York. <laughs> because of the abstract quality of my art, it actually takes some really beautiful photographs. There's a lot of cool, um, cool things that happen when you view it at close vantage points that I'm trying to really um, emphasize. So I'm going to have some prints for sale as well that make it a little bit more accessible for, for people who aren't collectors or businesses or people with great big warehouse spaces <laughs> where they can put my work to, um, to be able to see it and appreciate it. The art is so accessible now. You know, I have this little manifesto uh, that I have that I've had for like 10 years now. It's the Why Cheap Art Manifesto. <laughs> it's like one of my favorite manifestos, but I feel like the people that um, are supporting the arts in our community believe that. I mean, the under $99 um, art, art show is amazing. It makes art possible for people. And once people realize that it is possible, I mean, that's great. So I, I feel like it's a great community. Especially now that I'm going to New York, you get this idea in your head that art has to be exclusive and so sophisticated and Art is art is art, you know. Every but there is a there is a artwork for everybody and a way of connecting and a way of seeing the world. Art is a way of seeing the world. It's a language, and and once you recognize what your language in art is, the abilities to appreciate it just go through the roof. There is no one right answer to art. There is no person on the planet that can't create art, and it's it's so um, reflective of our of our fundamental humanness that I feel in the classroom, art has the ability to unite students. It has the ability to give teachers a new way of relating to their students so that they can really get in there. You know, it's art, because it's created by humans within a, a culture and a, and a time period and um, you know, societal things that are going on, art is so reflective of where we've been as, as a species, you know, and, and how, we, um, how we relate to the world around us, and there's so much to be learned. My work so often consists of all these little parts that I, that I create that then come together to form larger, um, larger pieces, it, but almost always it's little parts <laughs> that, I, that I bring together. And, the materials that I use are um, materials that aren't typically viewed as an art material and they're not typically viewed as a material that has any beauty. This sculpture that I'm working on right now for um, the event in May, it's um, made with uh, grocery bags, just old crappy <laughs> grocery bags um, that I had people just throw into my studio and I've found a way to totally redefine them. and remove without removing what they are removing the you know associations that come with them and making it into something very neat and thoughtful and delicate and deliberate and um, that's kind of what I'm always going for I'm always going for this oh wow that's that wow I never would have I never would have seen that you know why I come up with the things I come up with I don't know it's really it's really material driven I think my work is uh, very simplified oftentimes. It's one material, it's one repetitive process, and it's it's very straightforward in a lot of ways. And I wanted to add another le layer of depth to it. And so I've um, experimented with adding a sound component, uh, of adding a light component, and how can I um, make those function the way that I need to have them function. I had um, embedded speakers inside these little orbs that I created. They rested on shelves that I had attached to the wall and there was a light inside them as well. I was just never happy with the with how the sculpture ended up. Oh, and it, it was hard. <laughs> I learned a lot. I mean, 
Heck, I learned how to wire my own speakers, and their speakers were, you know, the size of a quarter, and that was interesting. And you know, you get into soldering, and you get into receivers, and you know, just sourcing the materials was hard. I have an idea in my head, and then I. I go to my sketchbook is the first place that I go and I draw it. I'm like, okay, can this work? And so often I think of, I think in terms of the space that I'm going into. So all of my work you'll see in my sketches is um, I started off with the framework of the space that I was working in and how do I build my sculptures to work within that space? And um, that's where they all start. I mean, I think a sketchbook, at least for me, is a fundamental tool. It's just that's how my process works. Is it's definitely starts here as almost a full idea and then it goes there and that's where I kind of work out my what I think my problems are going to be and then you just have to dive in, you just have to do it. And sometimes you have to cut your sculpture in half. Particularly in my work which is so labor intensive to go back and say alright I'm not sure that's going to work but I'm going to just right through it. That's, I mean, it's hard to do but it's, it's really important to, to take those risks sometimes because otherwise your work just stays safe and nobody likes safe work. It's not interesting. For the May 3rd Thursday, you can find my work at Elevation Pilates, uh, which is owned by Kathy Porcel. It's on Ridge Street, uh, next to second floor next to the Chronicle. And for July, I will be at Samantha's Cafe. Bye. This is my own personal testament. Bye. The show. This coming Thursday at Elevation Pilates, my website <laughs> will be live, <laughs> trinaquant.com, and you'll be able to see my work there, which will be um, after these events will be, uh, um, I'll have a calendar on there for where future shows will be. Duard Varks even Mike.